All right, everybody. What's up? We are back for another episode of TMP. And my special guest from Rochester, New York today, Mr. George, the guru, Farah. What's up, George? Oh, come on. What's up, brother? There's no need for guru or nothing. No. Just I your mean, brother, George. I know, but, you know, I want to let the, the world know who George is. George is a guru. He's known as a guru. And I want to say thanks for making the time. I know you're very busy. I see you got a lot of stuff going on now with supplement line and new Lamborghinis and stuff. You balling, ain't no, I'm you? I'm never busy. I'm never busy for my brother. <laughs> you know that. So, so how you been, brother? How you doing? Good, good. You know what I mean? You know, considering that I'm I'm having a surgery on Thursday. Okay, what's <laughs> what's going on now? Well, you know, like from the cancer, I have some residue in like every once in a while. I'm having a little bit issue with my kidney. Mm-hmm. So wanna, they want to go in there because I have some type of reflux. They want to go in there and clean a few things. should be like ambulatory. So it's basically just one night. Maybe okay, so I won't it's, even it's spend mi- the night. It's a minor thing. Yeah. It's nothing, nothing minor, drastic. Minor okay, thing. Awesome. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. Listen, after all the shit you've been through, this is like a, a walk in the park, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, George, I want to talk about George. I want to know. I want. I know. I know very well who George is. But I want the world, the ones that don't know George from the inside. I want to know. Basically, we want to know everything about you. I mean, you got such a long history going back to all the way to you you were born in lebanon or you were just are you just ha- lebanese yes I, w- I was i was born in lebanon actually and i we moved here at such a young age right my mother you know she's an american so that's how i got my citizen here okay you know? so oh so yeah. your mom is american yes my mom she's sicilian and my dad is lebanese so, so you, my mom's sicilian but she's american citizen oh, you know what I mean? so you yeah. have italian Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that. I never know you were half Italian. Do you speak Italian? You don't you remember I was speaking with Gianna Rico Italian? No, you no. Me how to... I don't remember. I, I mean everybody knows a couple of words, so I I don't remember that you speak Italian. I don't I mean You know, you know, I always like what I do basically, I told them you know non parlare l'italiano molto bene, but capisco molto bene. So what that means You don't then, speak it but I... you understand it. Yeah, I understand it very well yes. because, you know, my mom... See, I see how I speak but, you know, Italian. You see that? You just see that? I got you. <laughs> there you go. That's what's up. <laughs> so, so, you moved, so you moved to the U.S. at an early age and then uh, basically straight to New York. Is that, was you always been in Rochester, New York? Well, I was, uh, you know, first we were in Arizona. And oh, this really? is when I went. You remember? We talk, you forget you, I, I, No, no, no. I know you went to school in Arizona, to, to yeah, college. I went college. to school in Tucson. But what I'm saying is, like, you know, after Tucson, we went to Texas, and that's where my family now is still there, my brothers and sisters still in Texas. I moved to New York after Chicago because I was in Chicago doing some work. And then I ended up bringing some cell phones to the area because I was, remember, I was an electronic. I had passion in electronic. And that's how I ended up moving here. I thought I was going to work with Kodak. And uh, it's a long story short. My friend, when I moved with him, and he was, he, we were in the military together. He want me to come. Oh man, you gotta come here. We can make money. This man, he was a drug dealer. I'm like, I can't. You know, I didn't go to school to get busted. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. So, so I'm all set. You know, and I, I love. But you know what? It happens that you know I, I kind of stuck in this area here. It's it's nice. It's not New York per se, like the busy and stuff. It's it's you know upstate. Upstate. But it's it's yeah. nice, quiet. You've been here, then yeah, you can yeah. remember. So yeah, it's it's really nice. It's different. Okay. Yeah. So 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 basically, is is and that's also where you started your bodybuilding career, living in Rochester, right? You didn't train before. Yes. Yes. So let, let's talk about this. Look, cause people don't understand. People know you as a guru, and 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 but some people, the younger people now, they don't even know who was George Farah. I mean, George Farah was an IFBB pro. George Farah competed at the Olympia. Talk to me about your bodybuilding career, as how it started, and and how you went through through the amateur ranks to got your pro status. You know, because we only when people talk to you, they only talk about other guys that you work with. So let's talk about George, Mr. George Farah himself. How did you, or how long did it take you to turn pro? Well, you know, here's what George did. You know, George Farah, <laughs> speaking on the third, you know, yeah. third. But George always loved bodybuilding, and uh, I always, I was always, you know, between, you know, doing Kyokushin, which is karate, and then, you know, bodybuilding, because that's the only thing kept me away from, like, 
drugs and alcohol where all my friends used to do that, you know, in school. I wanted to be different, so I stuck with it. You never did any, you never, you never, you never tried any drugs? Never? Never. Oh, you were such a good kid, man. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead, go ahead. So anyway, so, you know, so what happened then is fast forward, you know, when I, when I was in Rochester and I ended up getting shot, I was. I never did, except you know, look a local show. That Which happened. Is, you know, that happened the, during your bodybuilding career, correct? Yes. Yes. So yes, how was, how far out from a show? Or how did, did you you competed before you got shot? Have you yes, competed? Yes, I competed in the local show. I won qualified, and I was supposed to do you know the the show of, of the USA. I was going to do the USA, and that's when I got shot. You know. How did you get shot? How did you get shot? Tell her what. How did you get shot? How does a man manage to get shot? You know, it wasn't like a robbery attempt, you know, on a friend of mine, which is his deceased right now. May God bless his soul. Uh, He was he was a jewelry, you know, like one of the biggest jewelry place owner. Mm -hmm. And he was with me. He wants to go to auction with me. We used to, you know, go buy cars and do some stuff. And, you know, we were at the wrong place, wrong time. And, you know what, man, one thing led to another. You know, they saw me the bigger guy. They thought I was his bodyguard. He ran away, ended up getting shot. Mm. So it was, it was, it but was terrible. But you got, man. you got severely shot. It's not like you got shot in yes. the arm. You yes. got so, shot you know, I got, in the stomach. Yeah, I got, I got a multiple gunshot wound that I actually almost ended my life. I right. had seven cardiac arrest. Uh, I was pronounced dead a couple times. I was forced into sedative coma, and at that time, I also lost the kidney. And, you know, a lot of fragment, you know, like a lot of fragmentation that left in me. And uh, fast forward, that's one of the reasons probably I got cancer, too. So it's, it's oh, just you, the yeah. whole, Do you think, it's, you a, think? it's a bad, vicious cycle, man. Okay. You know. So now, so now you are aspiring bodybuilder, competing already. Now you get shot. That's a, a major setback. For most people, that would yes. be the end of a career, whatever it is. But Well, they, exactly. You know, remember, Dennis, I'm, I was... That, that same morning, I was deadlifting, I don't know, like 500 pounds and squatting so mm. much, and I'm getting ready for a show. And the next thing, man, I mean, right now, me and you, we don't have this mentality because, you know, when you're a little older, you start thinking different. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. But back in the day, I'm like, oh, my God, I, 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 you know, here I am in the hospital after I was that bodybuilder, you know, 190 some pounds of muscles because, you know, at that time, I only competed at middleweight. And uh, everybody's like, you know, they come and see me, my friends and stuff. They're like, oh, man, you look great. And finally, I made it to the bathroom mirror. And I look, I'm like, oh, my God, what the hell is this? I'm looking, my face is so skinny. You remember, I went down to like 130 some pounds. And my eyes, I, you know, I didn't have even from from the one of the showers in my kidney. So all the, the white in my eyes, they were all black. black mm. And I'm like, what the hell is like looking in the demon and they're telling me how great I look. So I guess I look <laughs> a lot worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know what, man, God's good. God's good. You know, like a lot of people prayed for me and most importantly, God, you know, like really listened. Yeah. So, so, okay. So you've been, you were in the hospital for quite some time, right? Yes. Five months. Yeah. So after five months, you come out with the, uh, what the, what you call the back, the, um, Coleostomy bag. Yeah. So you had that. Yes. So, so you were basically in bad shape, but very bad shape. But very, they, very. Bad but shape. they don't call you bulletproof for nothing. So, <laughs> this did not stop you from continuing your dream, which was to turn pro. So, how long were you away from the gym before? I mean, how long were you basically with the bags before you were able to get back to the gym and train? You know, was it, it's weird because. Uh, you know, like I was supposed to have that bag, you know, like either permanently or I might like a couple of years take it out. But I start eating so good and that, you know, with me knowing nutrition and I start even studying more and going into it, into deep and stuff. And I'm like, man, you know what? You know, nutrition can really heal you. So anyway, I, I started working hard towards that. And I went to my doctor about like four or five months later. I said, man, I think I'm ready. And he looked at me and he goes, like, he didn't recognize me. He goes, who are you? I said, what do you mean? Oh, my, I'm George, you know, that's my surgeon, right? He totally forgot. He goes, he's looking at me. He goes, what happened to you? I'm like, what do you mean what happened to me? He goes, you left here like 130 pounds. You're like 200 pounds. I said, man, I've been eating good. I don't care about the bag. Mm-hmm. I've been working out. 
I mean, mind you, I left, you know, I went to the gym with five pounds. But man, you know, when you have that determination, you know what I mean? Like you want to, because it, it, like I told you, Dennis, right now we don't care. But at that time, like people look at me like, geez, what happened to you? I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, they don't know that they break your heart, you know, because you here you are walking around that muscular guy. And now everybody's looking at you like you're nothing. You know what I mean? So I, I came back I and, and, and sure enough, man, he did the testing. And let, six months later, he really like reversed the bag. So it was, yeah. it was a miracle, you know, all around. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay. So then you're back in the gym. and uh, Back the in the o- gym, the 100% only- after that. And yes, the only thing that the only thing that reminds you of that day is just the scar that you have in your stomach. Yes, you know when they opened you up. So awesome. So now, tell me, John, you go back to gym, you go back to competing. Nobody thought it would be possible, and here comes George, turning pro. Yes. What show did you turn pro at? Because I remember, I think I was there, if I'm not mistaken. You know, Dennis, what it is is like we, me, and you always talked about it. Oh, you can't do this, and you can't do this, and I'm like. You know, like I'm in the gym and they're looking at me like, oh, my God, you know, how this guy is going to come back or whatever. And I'm like, you know, man, just one day at a time, one day at a time. And, you know, it, it is so funny that there is a kid at that gym. I want to tell, you know, the story Go because I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not I don't like throw people on their buses and stuff. But there was that kid in the gym. You know, everybody's looking at me, man, George, so good to see you back. Because, you know, they were like in the news. They thought I was dead. You mm-hmm. know, they taking me on the crutches. You know, they, everybody saw me on the news in New York. So, and everybody's like, man, George, you, you know, thank God you're good. This, and then that one guy that used to compete. Joe Weeders, Olympia here in Orlando, Florida. A little bit strange coming out of Las Vegas for all of those years. Good evening. And welcome to the event nearly never happened. There's been an absence of a particular group of people on this stage that are back tonight. Tonight I'm here to say, welcome back to Miss Olympia. comes to me he goes what are you doing here you look like a shit I'm like, oh, man. you don't want to tell somebody who's already you know what i mean feeling like crap but make this story short i don't want to i don't want to like you know tell you the whole thing but he told me this i had tears in my eyes i had to hold it back i said you know it's okay but then fast forward six months later you know because now i already moved the bag and everything six months later i did the rochester show and this guy was standing there he was supposed to do the show. He ended up not doing it because he saw me. And everybody's like, holy crap, George, you look amazing for that show. You know, like they're all telling me. And then that guy came up to me. He goes, bro, you look amazing. I looked at him. I said, and you still look like a shit. I used <laughs> so, to, you know, yeah, I, used to I, look I, like I never shit. do this. I don't hold grudges, but that's just so sweet. You know what I mean? Like, man, you busted your butt yeah. because you took those negativity and yeah. and took them and make them into positivity. And that's what I always do. You know how my style, man. Mm. We work together. So I like I like always people to think positive. I mean, no matter what happened, man, I always think positive. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I lost, you know, I lost family, you know, back in the war and stuff, but we always stay positive and we always believe, like, man, it's all about peace and love and doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and then after that, I went to the junior national and I ended up taking second. And a lot of people thought I should have won. I said, it's okay. That will make me stronger. I was only 164 pounds in the mm-hmm. middleweight. I'm like, man, I got to get bigger. And and sure enough, I start working for that, for that, you know, for that national. I said, man, I want to go to national. What, show, what year know, was that again? That was 2000. 2000. That was, nationals. 2000. That was in New yeah. York. Yes, New York. That's the when Victor won the overall. Victor, All Victor right, won. Because I was there. I was there. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, and I remember telling you, "Hey, Mr. Dennis James, can I take a picture with you?" <laughs> no, I don't remember that because I that was that, <laughs> I'm just, that I'm just joking, I know man. that was you know, actually. I love everybody. I love the bodybuilding. 
you know, you were one of my inspirations. Sean Ray was one of my like the people. I used to look up to you guys. You know what I mean? So it's 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 so cool, man, to see those. You know, like it's it's a great memory. It's a great memory. If one thing this sport, man, have taught me is like to to you know stay humble. You meet amazing people. Yeah, I mean, it's like every sport you have some jerks, mm-hmm. but mostly, man, all the people I met will become like brothers. You know. Like me and you one time, we had big arguments and everybody's, oh, Dennis, Dennis. I'm like, no. You know what? Dennis is my brother. Me and my brother always have argument. And guess what? Two weeks later, me and you talked and everything was okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. this is what I like it. We're so close, man, in this industry. I love it. I love it. I love that. You know? Okay, so what was your goal? I mean, your goal must have been, of course, qualifying for the Olympia because you just brought up Sean Ray and I think Sean Ray was the one that thought he would never make it. And, and I remember, I remember, I don't know, I don't know, I couldn't quote you, but I remember when you uh, did qualify for the Olympia, you had a message for Sean at that time. Yes. Because, yes, you know, I, did. Well, I think, and, you know, and I think that's why me and Sean, we became close because he liked, the way I'm real, you know what mm, I mean? Mm. You know, because, I, you know, like we were talking and I said, you know, like in one of the interview, I said, you know, I'm going to make it to the Olympia. You know, I don't care. It was supposed to be my first show ever, the Southwest. And Sean said, this kid will never make it to the Olympia because, you know, it was Greg Titus, Paul Delat, uh, uh Melvin Anthony. Yeah, it was I mean, a- there was like some serious guy at the show and everybody's. So what happened is I'm like, man, I'm like, it's just like, again, I'm like, why is this guy saying I can't make it to the Olympia? You know what I mean? Yes. I said, I'm going to work day and night. And sure enough, so they start putting me against those big guys. And because I was so shredded, yeah. I kept making them all look fat. Yeah. You that, know what I'm that, saying? That was your thing. Because you you knew going into shows that you're not going to be the biggest guy on stage. So, yes. But, but yes. what I have to yes. give credit, what credit is due, you did manage to be in condition. Yes. Every single time you step on stage, so for that, yes. for that, you deserve everything you got. I mean, no doubt about it. So, yes. after, yes. W- why did you retire from bodybuilding? What was the main reason for you to say, okay, I'm done with competing myself, and I'll just, I'm just going to give all my time to helping others to achieve their goal? You know that because that last, that last time, you know, like I competed, I looked really good. But then I looked, in, and I'm going to be honest with you. At that time, Dennis, I'm like, okay, well, here I am. I'm going to qualify, but I'm not going to do the Olympia. But I'm doing it for the love of me. You know, I love doing the bodybuilding. Mm-hmm. But then I said, wait a minute, man. I have 13 people at the Olympia. How the hell am I going to compete at the Olympia? I have 13 people I got to care for. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not to mention, remember, I have, you know, my kidney been shot. I have so many things. And, and I'm one of the guys I always... I always, everybody I work with, including you, Dennis, we always talk about life after bodybuilding. Right, right. And some people don't understand. You know what? You don't have to be laying in bed and hurting to understand that there is life after bodybuilding. True. You know what I'm saying? True. Absolutely. But, but true. the reason why I even believe in it more, Dennis, because this is two times in my life, you know, like this has happened to me. I almost died. So there is life, man. Don't just, you know, chicken and rice, chicken and rice. Okay, and, and then what? Then then when you're 40 and 50 and you look back, like, what the hell did I do with my life? Mm-hmm. So you got to enjoy your life. You got to enjoy your family. You got to enjoy your friend, you know. And, no, and this, no, is, this, this is this, really what I did. There's a lot of things so, that, 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 that I think you uh, um, changed a lot of games for a lot of people. Not only, yeah. and, and, and I mean this, in, it, this is, I'm keeping it real. I mean, you are we definitely uh, uh, one of the guys, and, and I speak from experience because I know that, you know, you are not one of those crazy guys that want to do crazy doses. You rather work with minimal doses and, and, and just try to force or mo- now, let me not call it force because force sounds bad, but motivate someone to do the work. You know, you don't and, need you know, to do And you know, Dennis, Dennis, honestly, uh, you have worked with many coaches and you can't take nothing away from all these coaches. They're great. They're great coaches. So many of them, they're amazing. What do you mean many, many, I many? It was, it, was, it was three. Yeah, what I'm saying, you know, but the reason, what I'm saying is the reason when you worked with me, you won. I don't think because I'm better than them, but I think because we clicked like brothers, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I made you like kind of, 
even that you believe yourself, I mean, you believe in yourself more because I truly, truly believe, man, all my life, I was the underdog. They tell me, I will never do. I will never be. I will, don't let anybody tell you, you will never be or you will never do. You know, you we all under the same sky. We breathe the same air. Nothing is impossible. And I think that's what made me different than a lot, a lot of people. Because it's not just the diet. You really want to engage. You want to have that chemistry with people. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. And I think that's why, man, I always push this. And, and, and you, you from all the people know, I don't like taking too much drug. I don't like insulin. We never use any of that stuff. Very little, very minimum, you know, in in the shape I get my guys in, it's actually all hard work. And most importantly, is believing in themselves. Because you can tell somebody, give them everything, tell them everything. But if they don't believe in themselves, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And this is what I want to call it, Dennis. For all the coaches out there, really, if they can learn just one thing from me, it calls entanglement. When you're entangled with the person and you guys become one, his win is your win. And his loss is your loss. I'm telling you, they feel you. They ha- we, You have that vibe with that person like, oh, my God, that coach believe in me so much. And I think that's why I've been successful. Mm. What What do you think is the biggest, when it comes to George Farrell, what do you think makes people come to you? What do you think it is? What, it is, what do you think it is about you? Not, it's not, let's not talk about the entanglement. Let's just say, what do you think is your biggest traits? Why would people look for George it, honestly because they see what I've been through and you know I, I think they know that I appreciate health more than a lot of coaches I don't think because, that's I don't think that's <clears throat> the reason why <clears throat> but Dennis I'm gonna tell you something is very I important. tell you what the People. reason is because I look, I look <laughs> I'm looking in from the outside you know okay. you just want to be humble now but no I think it's because you have the results you know, results speak for themselves. I mean, if, if listen, if people look for a coach, they're going to look, who is he working with? What do these guys look like? I mean, you can't, you can't put them all under one roof and they all look great because there's guys that don't follow instructions. I mean, I know that everybody knows. You can't help, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't help everybody. You can't take a, a guy with zero genetics and make a superstar out of him. That's not possible. Oh, no. No. So, but when you look at the results, when you look at the guys, and when you look at the lineup of what caliber athletes are working with the person, that's why people say, "Listen, I need to see what that, what what he is all about." That's just simple. What it, that's just what it is. And you know, I mean, it's nice to be humble, but you can tell the truth. I said because you have the results, and nobody can take well, that. You know, nobody can take that away from you. <laughs> There's no possible way. <laughs> I can, you know, we can, we, we can tear down people. We can talk about people, you know, he's this and that and this. But at the end of the day, results speak for themselves. And, you know, like, as you can see, Dennis, I don't, honestly, I'm not out there. Like a lot of people tell me, why don't you go online? Why don't you? Because honestly, man, I don't care about followers. It's not, that's not what life is all about, man. We're only here visitors. And we're all gonna check out eventually. So I really want to pay it forward. This is the this is the sport that we all love. I know how much Dennis James loved that sport. If it wasn't for that sport, we won't be talking. You know, like I see you how how you like to bring guys to your house, let them stay over, help them. That's love, man. That's love. We have love for the sport. So what I'm what George Fair trying to do is better that sport, make that sport a little safer. Because man, there is some people out there. They're crazy, Dennis. They're taking young kids, yeah. throwing them on a crazy amount of stuff. And me and you, we talked about it before. You know, that's why I like your style because you you worry about people you work with. And it's just very important mm. because if we don't learn from our mistake, you know, who's gonna who's gonna teach us? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. we really need to put pay it forward. We need to help people. And I think also that's one of the reasons. A lot of people believe in me because they know I always preach about health. Mm-hmm. Because without your health. You're nothing. nothing. You're nothing. Nothing. You know? Yeah, I tell people the same thing. I said, listen, you gave, you went into yeah. the sport healthy. Try. Your biggest win of your career will be if you come out healthy. Yes. Doesn't matter where yeah. you place. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Because if Amen. you if you win if you win five Olympias and you come out and you and and, 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 and you have kidney failure or you have uh, 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 back issues. And I'm not talk- saying this because of, you know, let's say Ronnie. Ronnie won eight Olympias. I don't think he regrets anything. But I don't know if that would be my choice. Exactly. You know? I always say this. I love Ronnie. Mm. I love Ronnie and that's his mentality. I mean, God bless him. Mm. But you know, Dennis, I was just looking at pet, you know. 
a poster. You know, we were moving to my beach house, and I'm looking at a poster, me, uh, Don Youngblood, uh, Art Atwood, and Chris Dem. So I'm looking, I'm like, man, my daughter, she goes, Dad, look how great you look. I'm looking, I'm like, you know what, honey? I'm going to tell you something about bodybuilding because I want my kids away mm -hmm. from doing anything crazy, you know? I said, look, Daddy had cancer. Don Youngblood passed away. May, may he rest in, in blessed soul. Uh, Art Edward died. The Chris them crippled. It's not freaking healthy, you know? Taking that much amount is not healthy. Do I regret it? No, I don't. Do I do any different? No, I'm not going to do anything different because I love it. I love bodybuilding. I'm not going to sit down here and be hypocrite and tell people, oh, don't take nothing. But what I want to tell people, please do your blood work. Check you with your doctor. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, at least every six months, see what's going on on the inside. That way you can protect yourself. You know, like if, if I honestly, Dennis, if I know what I, you know, if I knew what I know today, not because I just finished my doctorate in integrative medicine, but man, you know, you think you know it all until you start studying. Like, you know, I got my bachelor. I'm like, oh my God. And you know, then I get my, you know, my master's. I'm like, oh my God, I don't. Then I get my doctorate and I'm like, holy crap, I didn't know anything. You know what I'm saying? So the more you learn, the more you know that you weren't that really that smart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I, if I knew what I know today, oh my God, so many things would have been different. Like, I want, I want the bodybuilder men to use a lot of antioxidant. They use a lot of like, you know, a lot of the, the, the seasoning, the turmeric, the ginger, all that, you know, like there's so many good supplements. Read you guys. Don't just stick with rice and chicken, rice and chicken or, or fish and rice. Fish, you know what I'm saying? I tell there's people, body, I, make I, your food colorful. You know what I tell people? I said, you know, you cannot just do chicken and rice, chicken and rice, chicken and rice all the time. You no. got to, you got to switch this up. Do rice and chicken sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. But seriously, Dennis, you know, the more colorful your your, your meals are, mm -hmm. the healthier you are. You know okay. what I'm saying? From your experience, and I know you, I, I'm asking the right person. From your experience, over through all these years that you've been working with athletes, what is the biggest mistake some athletes do? The biggest, if you have to choose one huge mistake, it doesn't matter in what. What, do you, what would you say is the biggest mistake they do? The misuse of diuretic. Honestly, that's mm -hmm. what I see in a lot of people because that's what most people have injured their kidney. Mm -hmm. And the biggest, biggest mistake, it's basically the same thing, using diuretic and then rebound. And they're all so happy. It's the worst thing. It's like, man, I was one, you know, I was 200 pounds and I'm on Saturday and I'm like 225 and it's, it's Monday, Tuesday. I'm like, dude, what do you think that 25 pound of water is? Mm. It's your kidney, your liver, your heart, your lungs. That's not good game. You know what I'm saying? So what I tell people, man, the biggest mistake we all made is just blow up after the show. Cutting the water and using diuretic. And then all of a sudden they start drinking all that water. And on top of it, they, they start, you know, because you, you cut like some carbs and sweet and stuff. And they forget then is that each one gram of sugar it's got to hold four gram of water inside you. So it's not a good idea, man, to gain that 20 and 30 pounds, you know. So what I tell people, honestly, go enjoy yourself after the show. Add whatever you want, you know, so, on Saturday night, or, okay. you know, enjoy hold it on, with the on, family. One, one second, brother. So one gram of sugar holds four grams of water? Yes. I yes. I, 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 I don't know. I got that. Then I, what, I always thought that one gram of carbs needs four grams of water to be transported to the system. Is, th is there any truth to that too? Or is that just the opposite? Yes, it's, it's, about, it's about the same. But okay. you remember, like when, you, when so, you have that one gram of carb, you need four grams of water to transfer it. So now your, your body, like I said, you, you're, you basically starve your body from water. On mm -hmm. top of it, you took diuretic. And some of them, dude, I couldn't believe it. Like you remember me and you, we use like half a diazide or something. Some people start a week and two before the show yeah. taking stuff. I'm like, yeah. what they're thinking, it's, man? It's crazy. This is this is yeah, this is crazy. So so, so honestly, so, this is the big mistake. What would you say? What you what, what, what would you tell athletes today? Um, what is the best way to avoid uh, diuretics? 
obviously be in shape <laughs> you know be, <laughs> exactly. in, be in shape early <laughs> be in shape early and let your body adjust to working with water and with sodium and with everything else but for the people that don't know because everybody's coming with the same like well how do you what do you have to do in the peak week listen i tell people all the time i can't tell you what you need to do because we need to see what you look like at that point you are 100 percent right you know like you know like certain people uh, uh, you you got to see how they look. Like you said, first of all, I tell people always try to be in shape two weeks before. So you don't have to play with that game, the water game, taking this, right. stopping this. You know what? You know, when you up your carb, remember your carb, it's 70 percent or whatever is water. Half of it is water. You know what I'm saying? 50 percent or more. So when you up your carb, you know, to carb up, then you can lower the water because you're still going to use, you know, go to bathroom or whatever because you have water. But I don't like the people that cut the water completely and take diuretic and stuff. This is that mean you're not in shape, you know. Yeah. Diuretic is not gonna get rid of fat. You know what I mean, Dennis? Right, right. So this is the mistake a lot of a lot of the young people do. So working with all these guys, man. I mean, and and, and I know you had shows where you had ten athletes, sometimes even more, in the same show. So as, as a coach, I mean, how, when do you sleep? while the show goes on when do you get the time <laughs> because i know about bodybuilders they turn into babies the last couple of weeks and you yes. literally not only are a coach you are a somewhat babysitter you know everybody wants your attention everybody wants to hear how good they look everybody wants you to show them that they're going to be all right so how do you manage working with so many guys at the same time well, you know I used to, Dennis. I honestly, oh, I'm so you not backed off. A, you backed off a little bit. Yes, yes. Okay. You know, like honestly, I'm not taking. As you can see, New York Pro. I have a couple of people coming, and both those guys in the open, they didn't get their entry to the United States because of COVID. Oh, so, so they I were only end up to Danny Yunan. You know, Danny, the only guy I was working on. So I really didn't, didn't have to lose sleep. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah. easy to dial one person or two versus, like you said, I used to have. 13 people like the Olympia, man. It yeah. just was too much, too much. So so you don't travel to shows anymore like that? So you stop that? I do, too? I do. But just the corona kind of like messed everything up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And and I was, like I said, I was focusing on my studying and stuff. And thank God now I finished. So now I'm going to start traveling again. But I have that surgery. It's kind of like, that's the only reason I didn't go to New York because I don't want to catch even a cold and delay that surgery any mm. further because, you know, I haven't seen my parents, man. I haven't been to Italy or to Lebanon or anywhere in almost two years now. And mm -hmm. I really want to travel. I really, really do want to travel. Did you get the vaccine? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I was the first guy to get it. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got it too. I got both shots because I figured... You know, I mean, I had the I had the virus in November last year, but and I didn't feel nothing. But I, I don't believe that this is enough antibodies that will carry me through the rest of my life. So I got the shots because I think we need them to travel in the future. I think it's going. You know, Dennis. You know what? I mean, it's so glad I'm glad you brought this. I don't understand these bodybuilders. They they say, "Oh, I don't want to take the shot because I don't." I'm like, you don't know what's in it. Listen, dude, you, you're buying stuff from China and putting it in your butt and your shoulders. And I've been saying about the vaccine. I said this, you know, somebody I posted a, a, a video where I got my first shot, and people say, How could you put this shit in your body? I was like, Man, I put shit in my body for 20 years. You guys think I'm worried about a vaccine? They don't even know. <laughs>
this is a fucking, yeah, it's a hypocrite so saying, yeah, I'm not, they don't know what it's in what there. I mean. They don't know what's in there. I said, okay, all right, you know everything you put in your body, you know what's in there, right? You know what's on the bottle. You don't know what's Dennis, in the bottle. Let me explain to you something. Those people that they're telling you this, they don't even know what's in the Tylenol. <laughs> yeah. So this is my question for you. Very, this is a very important question. And I don't want you, and I know you're not biased, but working with all these guys, who was the, the easiest one to work with? If you have to choose, let's say, three, four guys that was very easy to work with. Where basically, because, and, and, uh, and from my experience, I know, because some guys, you can tell them to fucking walk backwards and it works. You know, some guys, you literally have to pay attention and, 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 and twist things. Who was the guys that was the easiest to work with or still are if they still work with you? And who were the guys that you think were the hardest to work with because they didn't have what it takes, they didn't have the discipline and dedication, or it just wouldn't work? Because it happens to the best of the best that some things just don't work. Where's the guy I know? He had the cashews and stuff. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> that is used to love cashews before the show. Yeah. But the, honestly, man, I think the easiest one the easiest one from the people like, you know, that I, I worked with and they really never questioned it was Kai. Kai was so easy, man. You send them the plan. He never even asked you, hey, man, why is this and why that? I mean, he, he's, he's awesome. He was mm. just like, you know, just, okay, George, whatever you say, that's it. You know what I mean? Are you, do you still and, work uh, with Kai? The hardest one? I don't know. It's not hard. Is uh, busting chops all the time was Dexter. <laughs> I, you know what? Like Dexter, I, one time. I knew you were going to say Dex. I just, you know, you know Dexter it. because he's so funny. I love Dexter. You know, Dexter, man, he comes to my house and stays like my brother. But uh, Dexter, like one time, that was the funniest thing. Uh, one time I told him, Dexter, man, you know what? Now that you know you're a little older, I really want you to get a little drier. So I want you to really start tanning. So what did he reply to me? Georgie, I'm black. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> What's this have to do with you, Tanny? So we were laughing. Now, fast forward, a week later, he goes, God damn, Georgie, you got to see my glutes, man. They're back like when I was young. I'm like, okay, Dexter, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is the stuff, like really simple stuff. But honestly, man, most people they work, you know, like I work with. Have you I ever? have the privilege to work with these guys. They were all good. Like Rami, oh my God, Rami, huh. you tell him he's a rock. You know, you work with Rami. You tell him eat the rock, he'll eat it. Have so you ever have you ever that. worked with someone where you said it's like you told yourself it's like God, oh, this is not gonna work? Dennis, <laughs> <laughs> don't put me on the spot. I'm not telling you to tell me the name. I just tell you if that ever happened to oh. you. Oh my God! Many hey, times. Listen, man. It's, oh my God! There was so many, so many. I mean, you know how it is. The problem is. This is human nature. They always want somebody to blame on. You know what I mean? Right, right. So no matter what you do and how much you go, and, and then you sit down and you scratch your head like, why this guy's not getting in shape? You know what I mean? There's no way. There's something's wrong. But you know, it's not you because, like you said, you know, Dennis, you have helped so many guys. You know, and and you get so many people turn pro. The same with me. So when when a guy comes and you're like. Man, this guy's not changing. Then all of a sudden, you find out that he's, you know, you tell him to eat a banana with his breakfast instead he's eating banana. Or you, yeah, or, banana you or you, or you watch the stories of the girlfriends or the wives and you see them cheating. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. But there's always, there's always one of those guys, man. They, yeah. they really, you know, they're, they're, you know, like, I don't know if you saw the last, the, the last, you know, seminar I did. But I told these people, they said, hey, you know, in America, is easy. Why? And this, I said, no, you know, listen, I'm here in London now. I said, I'm going to go in the, on the flight and the, and the pilot's going to put the cockpit, you know what I'm saying, and, and put the radar on JFK. If you move it half a millimeter left or half a millimeter right, I either end up in Canada or in a different state. They looked at me. I said, so basically what I'm trying to tell you, if you have a target and you go left and right, you're not going to end up at that target. Mm, mm. So stop blaming the people. Just blame yourself. If you know you're not. Listen, to me, when I used to diet and, and I looked at my my stuff, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I can't. Because like sometimes my daughter, dad, come on, it's a little piece of pizza. I'm like, honey, you don't understand. I have a show. Because if I had that pizza and I'm standing there and wonder why I'm not getting called in that first call up, mm -hmm. then I'm going to blame it on that my daughter and get mad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you either give something 100% or might as well don't do it. I'm talking relationship, 
uh, your job, bodybuilding, everything, man, you have to give 100% right. in order for you to achieve the unachievable. Right. Did you did you work with Dex for the Olympia, the last Olympia? Yeah, you know the problem, I wasn't there. Yeah. You know. So but you were, you, the, were working, Dexter, you were working you were working with him. The first one to tell you. You were working Dexter with him. The first one to tell you. When I he sent me his, his picture, I said, Dexter, there's something's wrong with you. He said, what do you mean? I said, you're not absorbing the food and your stomach's sticking out. It, something is not right. No, no, Georgie, you don't understand because on camera, I'm like, bro, I have, you know, I, I worked with you for almost 10, 11 years. I know what's going on. There's something is not right. But, you know, then, then you know. He, what he do you think? Look, what do you look. think was it? What was it? Was it age catching up? You know, it's not age because the year before, I mean, you see, six months before at the Arnold, he looked freaking amazing. As a matter of fact, a lot of people had him winning the show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I think, you know, he went, uh, instead of using a lot of the weight, heavier and stuff, the compound that keep the size, he went with a lot of like those uh, electromagnetic stuff. I think this is my opinion. I mean, I don't know. Everybody might think differently. I'll, I'll give you mine. I'll give you mine after, after you finish. I'll give you mine. Yeah, because, you know, honestly, honestly, man, that's, that's your bread and butter, like lifting weight, even using machine, I don't mind, but that electromagnetic and stuff, I don't know how much it really, like, we don't know much about it, and Dexter should have just really busted his butt, do the, you know, what we're, exactly what we did for, for the Arnold, and not, you know, try something new, especially that you're going to retire, yeah. but you know what, you can't take nothing away from Dexter. He still look okay. He still look decent. You know what? And, and, and honestly, yeah, no, I'm I mean, so proud of that guy. Dex is, I'm so proud Dex to is, be part of it. Yeah. yeah. Dexter is one of the goats. Absolutely. I mean, come on. Yes. But regarding that, uh, whatever, uh, that system, that training, that's a bunch of bullshit in my eyes. My opinion, <laughs> <laughs> my opinion, listen, the best bodybuilders didn't use that shit. Now, if I see people walk around the gym, with a cable sticking out of their hamstring and one sticking out of the underwear or whatever, you know, what's, what's going on? What's happening right now? If that will be the case, if you can grow muscle from just getting cramps, you know, then why don't I just hook myself up? Why am I going to the gym? So I believe working with weights is what keeps you full, working heavy, because you use that stuff, you can't train heavy. It feels great while you're doing it, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work. You know, so I mean, a lot I of mean, people. It's amazing for rehab and stuff. Exactly. For competition, I think you need that compound. Yes. You need, you I, need that resistance because that's that's how you break down, you know, your muscle, so you can build it while you're eating yeah. and feeding and resting. You know what I'm saying? They so. tried. They tried that stuff 20 years ago. I remember somebody at the at the FIBO in Germany came to me and said, "Yeah, we got this electro. They put them pads on my calves, and my calf was doing. Whoo, whoo. I got I got a cramp. You know, I got it, it was sore the next day." But, you know, hey, listen, if that's to make you grow, why we go to the gym? For what? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely. It, it, even Dexter will tell you. He mm -hmm. told me, he goes, man, Georgia, I should have. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. You know what? Like I said, you can't take away nothing from Dex. He's an amazing champion. I love him. And, you know, I love him that he retired while he's healthy. Yes. He's a grandpa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is a beautiful, great yeah. ending. And that's how every champion should He retire. had the best career ever. So, yes. I mean, he when he, he can yeah. look back at 20 years and can see people still talk about him. Absolutely. Amen. Now, Kai Amen. Green. I want to bring up Kai Green real quick for you. You still work with Kai? Yes. <laughs> so, so, so why is are we going to see him back on stage? You, you know, with Kai, it's 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 very hard to tell you if he's coming back or not. Like, honestly, about three weeks ago, he was so gone hold. He wants to, you know, George, we got to do something. We got to do something. I don't know because I'm not Kai. You know, he have to speak. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But as far as like, you know, like people, you know, like Sean, for example, Sean said, he goes, Kai, oh, well, even if he's come back, you know, nobody make a comeback. He, he, he need to understand something. Kai's not making a comeback. Kai haven't even stopped working out. Right, right, right. Kai right, haven't right. even stopped sending me his picture. If I sh if I send you a picture right now, how Kai, how Kai looked three weeks ago, you know, being off and just eating, you'll be like, oh my God, are you mm -hmm. serious? He looked amazing. You know what I'm saying? So but, it's not like somebody all retired is not doing legs or you're just coming back. No, mm -hmm. bro. He haven't stopped. He yeah. haven't stopped. But he's up there in age now, too. So do you think Kai could still be competitive? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yes. I, th I think so, too. It's going to be hard. I mean, um, if you compare Kai, I mean, 
the last time we saw Kai on stage was when he won the Arnold. Yes. You know, and he looked unbelievable. And uh, that was, what was it, five years ago, six years ago? 2016, yes. So, yes, yeah, five years ago. So, you know, and, you know, I mean, yeah, it's not, he never stopped training. So he's still, and he looks <laughs> he looks like he's six weeks out, four weeks Dennis, out. Dennis, honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, I he's just like, the reason why I believe he can come back and be dangerous, because every two, three weeks, even in the off season, he send me pictures. What off season? He's been he's been on stuff. the same season for five years. He looks that, unbelievable. That's what I'm saying is, but you know what we do is we really trim him down and then go back up. It's like kind of dieting for a show. So he's he's very smart. You know, mm. it's one thing about Kai Man. He's very smart. He know that if he wants to make a comeback, anytime he need to be ready. You know, he he don't like he doesn't never stop in, eating good or or training and stuff. And that's why I think if he really like, I mean, dude, he just sent me uh, pictures. You know, like I said three weeks ago, he was three hundred pounds, mm -hmm. serratus, glutes. I mean, crazy. Yeah, crazy, I that, believe it. Honestly. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, yeah. we see him. We see him. I mean, it's not yeah. like he's hiding. He's not hiding. Yeah. I mean, he's showing himself. That's why I don't understand why. Why do you think it is? Why is he not competing? You know, maybe this I have to tell you off the record. Okay, I mean, I have an idea, but I, I mean, maybe there was something else, like, you know, I mean, if, you know. He just, you know, he really want, he wanted he wanted to win the Olympia. That was, like, everything he wanted so, so you at think, that time. So, so you think it hurt him? It, it did something to it him did, not winning? You know, he's very, you know, Kai is a very, very emotional person. Mm -hmm. He's a beautiful, like, he's the gentle giant, you know what I mean? He had beautiful heart, beautiful attitude. And I think that kind of hurt him because, man, he really, really believed that he should have won it a couple of times and mm -hmm. it didn't happen. It kind of like crushed him, you know. But but you never know, man. People grow. And, you know, I mean, Kai's 45 now. He's not a little kid. So he, he needs to really like either do it or, you know, yeah. he's still doing his thing. He's still doing making money, stuff he loves. He's acting, a couple of movies now and stuff. So, you know what? But I, I really like to see him. You know, Mr. Olympia. He really like. You know what I mean? It's just, but, but we never know. We yeah. never know. Yeah. Well, hope, let's hope. Let's hope we uh, still get to see him. Maybe come back for or not come back. I uh, hope so. I step hope so. step back on stage and uh, you know and and because you know especially when Phil was gone when Phil got beat by Sean Roden I thought that would have been a wake up call for him to say okay now let me let me see if I can. Because uh, I was, tried, Dennis. Really? <laughs> I tried. Yeah, I talked to him about it at that time, and uh, you know he he didn't want it, but but you know what? Maybe like I said, now thing is different. He's with Redcon, you know. Mm -hmm. He he's feeling good. He's less stressed and owning his you know like the, the company by himself. Now there's people who know what they're doing, so it might you, you know you never know, man. Yeah. You never know. Tell me about your new your new uh, supplement line. Just give me a give you me know, a shout Dennis, out. The, my 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 new supplements. It's uh, it's just like any supplement. The only thing I, I truly, truly, truly believe, you know, like there is a big study, actually, University of Sydney, Australia, saying that, you know, people that use protein powder, they're they're dying earlier. And and, you know, what they didn't what they forget to mention, because I kind of like wrote them and told them, like, you know, but it's not the protein. Right. It's maybe the sucralose and the additive but they never got back to me. And I truly, truly, truly believe the more I start like looking into, you know, the sucralose and a lot of additive that we add to the stuff, it's just not natural, man. And, and as a human, everything is not natural. Where is it going to go? Your body is going to become toxic to it or something, you know, like it either goes to fat or it could cause you many problems. So, you know, after my cancer, and my God bless everybody and keep that thing away because I tell you, Dennis, it really, I mean, I love you, bro, for calling me a couple of times while I'm in the hospital and, and checking on me. And, and you know, I, I always thank Mr. Jim Mannion because I was ready, man, to end it, you know, and Jim, mm -hmm. Mr. Jim Mannion, he really like really propped me. And that's why I, I love that man for the rest of my life. You know, it, it, Steve Weinberger used to call me, my big brother. So, you know, there's so many. That's why I said, man, this this just gave me so much. But honestly, you know, I don't want to put, you know, like a, a company out there just to make money. I mean, we all need money, but I'm not I'm not at that place, man, in my life anymore. Like 
oh, I need money. I need. It's not about money. It's about paying it forward. It's about helping people. So that's why when my company hits the, you know, the the, the U.S. Now it's already in a couple of places in Europe. You know, when it hits the U.S., you're gonna see that it's as pure as it comes. So the only the only sweetener I'm I'm using it's only stevia and sometimes it's uh, you know uh, raw cane uh, you know sugar uh, organic. I'm using uh, uh, I'm using honey you know and certain stuff. So no coloration. I'm trying to keep it as as pure as possible. You how know can how can the people get hold of the stuff if they if they're interested? Well, yeah. it's eventually it's going to be worldwide. Mm -hmm. The only reason I didn't you know like even it's mo most of it is you know like we made it here and some in Europe. You know, uh, you know, like uh, the, the, the stuff here in the U.S. I don't want to lose money because you know here it, it, it's really a lot of money to have a warehouse and stuff. So. Pretty soon it's going to be worldwide. Okay. You know, now it's basically in uh, some European like uh, countries, a couple Arabic countries, but eventually it's going to be worldwide. Awesome. You know. All right. We're looking forward yeah. to it. Brother, I think. thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy man. Dude, I'm never, never busy for you. Never, yeah. honestly, Dennis. And you know how we go, man. Yeah. Love to the family. Love you thank guys you. all. Thank Whoever you. is watching us, please. Keep on doing the right thing. Hopefully, this, we, this I mean, we love bodybuilding. Yeah. We love Ho it. We hopefully, we it run safe. into each other at the next show somewhere. You the, better, you better. Yeah, I, I was in, I was in the Tampa for the New York Pro. I, yeah, I was, I was like, man, I, I know, I know, and and you know, and you know, it's so funny. Like, I was like, kind of go, but then I'm like, man, I have that surgery coming this week. Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. don't want to take a chance. Yeah. That's all. That's yeah, all. take 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 care of yourself, man. We'll get we'll get together for sure, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Anytime. Give Anytime. my love to yeah. your family, brother. Hi. Right. Same, same with you. Peace same out, with you. Man. Take care, bro. Take care, bro. Take care, you guys. Bye bye.